Okay, we'll talk about some DSP rack transfers and that kind of stuff. So again, under preferences, you may need to add a few DSP plugin paths. So the fab filter plugins that I'm using here, that's where the, uh, the VST versions are stored. So because Soundminer is now 64-bit, you need to use 64-bit uh, VST2. I uh, probably will be adding VST3 at some point once, once this version comes out and I'm looking for something to do if that ever happens. Anyway, you can use semicolons or new lines just to keep on adding multiple paths. And then, oh, actually while I was there, there's a option under your transfers for your plugin tail size. So this is the maximum amount that it's going to transfer. Uh, for things like delays or reverbs, you're going to need to have some plugin tail size. Otherwise, if you mark a section that's like one second long and you've got three seconds of reverb to tail afterwards, it's going to sound cut off. Uh, so this is a maximum amount, which means that if after three seconds it goes to digital silence, it will stop processing at that point. Okay, so now with that set, let's find a whistle. There we go. So I'll call up the DSP rack, and I've got a fab filter on already. So this is the dry sound. Flip it on. And some people might ask, well, why don't you just do that in your DAW? Well, there's I can instantly hear what it would sound like if I just chose like the right channel. I can pitch it down. Make adjustments. And when I'm ready, because I don't have Reaper running anymore, I'll just hit uh, Control B, which will do a transfer. It's like bring into. It's still going to go to the same transfer path, which is that Reaper media. Um, so let's have a look at it here. So there it is. That's what just got transferred. Now, if I drag this into the player area here, Because I'm double processing. So there's the sound file with the processing on. Another fun thing you can do, let's go back to the another sound, something a bit longer, is you can use this record button and it's going to record a file into your transfer path. But I can I can perform various things, change parameters, and it's recording everything that's basic that I'm basically listening to. Hit record again. And there's my original sound. Now here's something that's really cool. I have no plugins up. You can see there's a little icon down at the bottom right which says Recall Plugins. So whenever I've done a transfer or a, um, a recording too, yeah, a recording as well. So if I've done a live recording or a transfer, it's embedding basically a signature from the specific computer into the sound file, as well as all the information that's needed to sort of recreate the DSP rack. Um, that's important to note that it is specific to your computer. So if I took this file, to someone else or mailed it or someone downloaded it, they wouldn't be able to see what plugins I use. They wouldn't be able to recall it. It's only this computer. Anyway, so I can click on it and it will say, do you want to recall the rack? And I go, okay. And now there's my rack back with the settings that I used when I stopped recording. So that's, that's a, a pretty useful thing. Oh, another thing. Did I mention about this, the smart drag thing? Probably not. I'm going to go over it again anyway. So I'll just call Reaper up. So sometimes you don't want to spot onto a timeline. You want to be able to maybe drag it into a, a sampler slot, or if you're using Wise, maybe it needs to go to a specific location. So this is another option. You can mark a section of the sound file. I'll just get rid of Don't need any plugins on this. And then when you click and hold on this, you're going to see the waveform sort of flash dark. And that just means that it's transferred the file 
And now I've got my mouse still held down. And now when I start to drag, oh, I didn't have my DAW set. Silly Justin. I'll get there. So DAW, sound minor reaper extension. We'll do the same thing. I didn't know what my DAW was, so it's like, oh, I'll just hold it here. And I, I could have dragged it onto the dock icon and stuff. But anyway, or the taskbar. So let's do the same thing. Click, drag, and then I can drop that sound file wherever I want. Now, when you do that, you don't get handles. So that's the only downside. Um, just because when you're when you use the the Spot API, it's able to communicate to the application directly and say, "Okay, this is the region." But that sort of thing doesn't exist when you're just dragging and dropping. So it really is. You can mark a, a section of the sound file or do the entire sound file. Uh, click, drag, and then drop. 